Hey everyone, this is just a little update for Hello My Name is Kent Hovind episode 10. But before I get into it, let me just mention I'm trying out a different microphone. And since audio experiments have always been such a disaster for me in the past, I'm definitely not an audio engineer. I figured I'd just try it on a little video like this and let you guys tell me if it sounds better or worse. If you want me to use this microphone, if you want me to use the other microphone, I'm fine either way, but I just want to see what you guys prefer. So let me know in the comments. Anyway, in Hovind episode 10, I said this. Now, full disclosure, I don't have the original source for this. So it's possible that there's more to this than it appears. So since I don't want to be accused of quote mining, I'll just put an asterisk on this and say I'm not 100% sure about it. But assuming it's an accurate quote, it's pretty damn hilarious, so I think it warrants inclusion. After their 1985 efforts, they got back at it in 1988, because I guess that was something they felt the need to do after their first humiliation. And incredibly, they claimed that the feather impressions had been forged onto a fossil of a flying reptile. Not that they were forged to make it look like a flying reptile, but that the original fossil was a flying reptile, and they faked feathers on top of it. But now, thanks to the author of the Talk Origins piece on the so-called Archaeopteryx forgery, Chris Nedden, and I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his last name, sorry if I got it wrong, man. He was super helpful, he's an awesome guy. He got in touch with his contacts and managed to find this. So now I can say definitively that that quote was accurate, it was in context, and it was just as stupid as it sounds. But let's go through a few other things here. Cherig et al., and again, that's another name I don't know how to pronounce, fuck it, presented a set of arguments to rebut the unpublished suggestions made by some of us that the specimen of Archaeopteryx in the British Museum may be a forgery. Our manuscript detailing our suspicions was not accepted for publication, apparently because the paleontological community has been mobilized to suppress it. So we start off with a creationist-style conspiracy theory, and yes, Lee Spetner is a creationist, that the scientific community is just keeping our amazing work suppressed. They refuse to publish us because they know we're right. They're all working against us. It gets tiresome having to listen to this shit sometimes. So right off the bat, in this supposedly professional paper, it's completely unprofessional whining and conspiracy theorizing. Good start. Of course, they never consider the possibility that maybe their first paper in 1985 was just a laughably stupid piece of shit. Apparently, they have a very inflated view of how seriously they're taken and how good their work is if they seriously think the entire paleontological community has to mobilize to prevent them from publication when really they're just fucking idiots. By the way, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, just go back and watch Hoven 10. I talk about it there. On page two, we get the confirmation that the quote I included in the video is actually correct. Our contention is that the feather impressions were forged onto a fossil of a flying reptile. That's still a shockingly stupid statement. Now, there is something I should mention. In that video, I said that... I'll just play it. There is no fossil reptile with a skeleton like this and wing membranes or any other flying mechanism in place of feathers. It either doesn't exist or it's never been discovered. So, some people had an objection to that, which is that in 2015, there was a fossil called Yichi found, which is a theropod with an elongated third finger and a wrist bone elongated into a strut to support a wing membrane. And that is a good point. If you take a fossil like that to be a theropod, then there is in fact a theropod that's been discovered that likely had wing membranes. But my point in that video still stands, because regardless, Archaeopteryx's skeleton does not have those features, and it doesn't seem likely structurally that it would even support a wing membrane. But even if it can, there's no evidence that it does. And there's certainly no reason that if someone was going to fake a flying theropod meant to serve as a transition form between dinosaurs and birds that they would take something like yi chi that looks like it supports a wing membrane which birds don't have and which would be revolutionary in its own right especially at the time the whole thing makes no goddamn sense there's no evidence for it in the first place none and the idea that someone would choose to fake a bird on top of a dinosaur that has a skeleton built for a wing membrane is fucking asinine and since archaeopteryx doesn't show any of these features they would have to actually remove them which would take more work Work and make it easier to detect the hoax before they stuck the feathers on top. I don't know what these people are thinking. So let's look at a couple of other things here. After the publication of their paper, Dr. Cherig saw fit to grant us two small samples of material, one from a feathered region and the other from a non-feathered region, so that we could test our suspicions. The sample, which was about a milligram, was too small to make any chemical tests and the only meaningful test that could be made was an examination with a scanning electron microscope. We made these tests and are here reporting the results which point in the direction of a forgery. We reported our results to Dr. Cherig at the museum and sent him copies of typical photographs 
photographs we obtained from the scanning electron microscope. At the same time, we requested additional samples so that we could confirm our results. Since our sample was so small, it could have, even by chance, contained foreign material. Dr. Cherig replied that the material we saw in our SEM photographs of the feathered area was undoubtedly some of the preservative material that had been painted on the fossil in the past. This did not explain, however, the clean appearance of the control sample from the non-feathered area. This reply also shows a somewhat devious attitude on the part of the museum. They knew why we wanted the samples, and they knew what we were going to do with them. If they knew from the start that the surface of the fossil had been contaminated with preservative, why did they not give us a sample from material slightly under the surface? Well, I believe the real question is why they gave you any material at all after the absolute fucking shit show that was your previous paper in 85. I have no idea why anyone at that museum would take these people seriously. Maybe it's just because they're entertained by this bullshit they put out, and they just want to see what they're going to do. Maybe they subscribe to the British Journal of Photography, which this is published in, just so that when these papers come out they can laugh their fucking asses off. That's the only explanation I can see. I honestly don't know, for one thing, why these people think they're entitled to anyone's time from the museum, and for another thing, why the museum people think these people are worth any of their time. It's really confusing. Another part says, if they are correct in their belief that the fossil is genuine, the tests we suggested would be the most direct way of proving it, and publishing their results would certainly stop us from annoying them further by suggesting that the fossil might have been forged. Such a course is, we think, what anyone would do in their place. No, as a matter of fact, they've shown a supernaturally high amount of patience with you people. They're acting like they actually give a shit about you, which is incredible. But it's pretty obvious that you're not exactly at the top of their list of concerns, and it's also pretty obvious why. Maybe stop acting like spoiled children, and start acting like professional fucking scientists. Maybe then someone might actually take you seriously enough to give you what you want. Maybe if you wrote like serious scientists, you might actually get your work published, you know? Well, if you also increased your standards of evidence and the quality of your work. I know I'm scolding people who wrote this shit like 30 years ago, but creationists still bring this shit up as though it's current science, and besides which, I mean, come on! This deserves more than 30 years worth of shame. So then, once again, we get into some conspiracy theories. We therefore think they might have done the tests and are unwilling to report the results because they do not substantiate their contention that the fossil is genuine. So, no evidence, you're just asserting this, they did the tests, and it turns out we're right, but they won't tell anyone. And we know this because, uh, we want it to be true. <laughs> That's it. This hypothesis would also explain their adamant refusal to grant us further access to the fossil. No, that's pretty much that you're a bunch of fucking idiots. And it would also explain why they may be behind the move to silence us and prevent us from publishing our results. I am sorry guys, but if your work is not of good enough quality to get published, that's on you. Don't go pretending that the museum is behind some kind of massive conspiracy where the entire scientific community wants to shut you out. You're morons. You said the fucking bird feathers were put on top of a flying reptile fossil. It shows the level you're operating at, and you're not operating at the level of the actual paleontological community, the people who are actual scientists in this actual field. <laughs> We think that the museum's position toward us gives cause for some suspicion that they may be hiding more than they are revealing. And 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> yeah, they're hiding something because they're not sending chunks of one of the most important fossils in history to whatever clown demands it, regardless of how poor their reasoning was already shown to be the last time the museum dealt with them, and regardless of how dickheadedly unprofessional they act towards the people at the museum. Are you kidding me? You know, I really get sick of this kind of whining. I hear this all the time from creationists. You know, I have irrefutable proof that the Earth is 6,000 years old. You know, look, water can carve paths through mud, so the Grand Canyon had to have been made in the Great Flood. But there's a conspiracy to suppress the word of God in the scientific community, and they use the excuse of peer review to refuse to publish it. Bastards. And on page three, they say that for the sake of brevity, they didn't want to rebut Cherig et al. at length. But the weird thing is that over half of this paper is just whining, unfounded conspiracy theories, and yes, the assertion that Archaeopteryx was a forgery based on a real fossil of a short-fingered, featherless, flying reptile. There's not even a mention of how they come to the conclusion that the base fossil was able to fly. That'd be absolutely fascinating information, but apparently not fascinating enough to risk compromising the brevity of their paper. Then they spend a little bit of time rebutting the museum scientist's response to their original paper. 
a little bit of time. And basically just the last page is for their actual new results out of four pages. So for the sake of brevity, they don't want to rebut at length the counter arguments to their original claims. They just want to whine and spew conspiracy theories for two and a half pages for brevity. Well, the rest of the articles on the screen, if you want to read through their stunning new results as of 1988, obviously, you're more than welcome to do so. If you find anything interesting there, just mention it in the comments and I'll see you later.